Good morning, good day, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, today, I'll continue with what I discussed when I did the unboxing of the Carlos Santos shoes, which I have here. Um, I mentioned that I had another pair of shoes that I would like to do an unboxing video. So we'll do an unboxing video and uh, proceed to do the first uh, treatment conditioning, possibly a uh, mirror shine to the shoes. In this case, we're talking about a Voss shoes. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it originally, but <clears throat> that was how I refer to them. These, as you can see from the label, are a pair of uh, Austerity Broke shoes. I got this through Ascot Shoes in England. You can visit their website, ascotshoes.com. Uh, uh, this is not a sponsored video. I was just letting you know where I got them from. And what you get from them is a pair of shoes in a bass box. Uh, they also come in bass dust bag, which is kind of interesting because um, in previous videos, if you refer to one of my suede uh, shoes, also from Vass, they come, and I think I also have one derby um, video, that is, sorry. Uh, they come in a bag that has, like this one, the logo printed on it. But this, in this case, the bags are not the same, I think, from what I can see. Um, so that's just something that, you know, I could point out. Now about, about the shoes themselves, setting aside the dust bags and the box itself, they are a pair of um, Sturdy Brogue in color cognac. I haven't worn them, it seems like they were a model that got tested in a store, most likely that Ascot shoes might be uh, some sort of brick and mortar. I'm not 100% sure. Um, they are 42 and a half, which is what I wear in most of my shoes, depending on the last. <clears throat> this shoe are made on the U last from Vass, which is a little bit of a chiseled with a slope down on the toe cap area. Now, they are on JR soles, closed channel, and they have this brass here for uh, decoration purposes, but these pieces of brass here, I actually like because it helps wear down the shoes a little bit slower on the heel area. What I mean is, say for instance, this chini uh, boots that I'm wearing. You can see they also have the brass in this area that I assume helps with the structure of the heel toe. But because there is nothing in here, just the rubber, the rubber might wear a little bit faster. And I know that I wear the shoes uh, like that in those areas. So this brass decoration here is much appreciated. Now, a brief side-by-side. -side. Uh, these are the Carlos Santos that we talked about. You can still see that I still have the handwritten um, appreciation. Thank you letter from Costas from the Noble Shoe. But I thought it'd be interesting to um, compare one shoe to the other. As you can see, both are chiseled toe. This one is more blocky than this one. Um, the last is also very slim on the waist for both shoes. Uh, the vas is rather flat as opposed to a little bit of a little um, convex. Or concave, convex uh, 
setting on the Carlos Santos. The Carlos Santos is a polished and hand painted, most likely. Uh, so not that that makes a huge of a difference because I, I mean it does to you as an owner but to everyone else they won't see this most likely so they wouldn't know these two differences now this shoe over here is hand lasted i think this one being hand grade sh would also be hand lasted now i'm not 100 percent sure and those differences you can tell uh only if you own the shoe and only if you discuss with the manufacturer because from a practical stance if I, if I were to show these shoes like that just without giving you any more information you wouldn't be able to tell if there is any hand lasted uh, uh, procedure done to the shoe to the naked eye it would seem like they're both uh, machine made now there's small differences yes the round laces as opposed to the flat laces over here which I think this is more appealing than this but this is what the shoe comes with and there's nothing wrong with that it's just personal preference if i like uh, flat laces i think it's a little bit more elegant <clears throat> now the soles like i commented they're pretty much uh, a huge difference in terms of detail they're both close channel which is nice but the, in carlos santos they went the extra step to uh, paint the uh, sole and make it look a little bit more presentable. Now you can see that there's also some brass decoration here with the nails and they have their logo embossed or imprinted on the sole, which is interesting, uh, but they have no brass in this area, which I would much rather like and I will do it aftermarket. So I will personally uh, install those brass tags on these shoes um what else i don't know uh, people like to measure density on the stitching which is a yes it would indicate about detail and how proficient the shoemaker is because obviously the denser the uh, shoe stitching the more it would be demanding for the manufacturer but i think that past a given point i don't think that increasing the amount of stitches per centimeter per inch however you want to measure it it's going to make a huge difference um, aside from the obvious technical difficulty that it presents uh, to the maker especially if we're talking about hand lasted shoes so um, that being said let's move forward with the treatment on the shoes the first thing we're going to do is prepare the shoe trees we will use on these shoes um, for this pair of uh, vase I did not get the last shoe trees I wanted to compare what you have in the market with um, the manufacturers because I have other shoes that do have the original Voss shoe trees. I want to see if there is any difference so in the long term, not that it's going to be something that I can notice um, at the moment. Um, so the first thing, especially on these Voss shoes, I don't know how long they were in storage, most likely for a while, uh, as opposed to the Carlos Santos, which I know Costas just had made uh, this year. And there was a huge delay on, on those shoes, nothing on cost us. It's because of the current global situation. So I will start by conditioning the lining and the insoles of the shoe. They are made out of leather. So you wanna make sure that it is properly kept and hydrated, just like the rest of the leather on your shoe. It is important because they are part of the structure of the shoe, those components, the lining and the insoles. So you want to make sure that they are properly kept. They do not need that much. And if they have been in storage for quite a while, they will be rather dry. So any product that you apply, it's going to be absorbed rather fast.
Make sure to do not forget the tongue. <clears throat> now I will remove the laces. Not all of the laces, but. Uh, some of the laces, some of the lacing, so that I can also access this area over, over here when I hydrate the upper. It is always comical to me that after undoing the original shoemakers, Lacing pattern, I can never replicate it. I try to keep track of how it came. Um, to make sure that uh, I do it the same way when I'm done, but I never seem to get it quite right. Okay, I'm taking the plastics off this um, shoe tree. To me to actually undo the long shoe first in terms of lacing. I've also gotten some questions on the videos about where I store my products. In previous videos I have shown partially where I keep them so I'll refer to that in a future video maybe later today depending on how much time I have. <clears throat> so Now there are shoe trees and there are shoe trees. If possible, it's best to go with a lasted shoe tree because like the word, like the name says it, lasted uh, means that most likely it replicates the same last or form or shape that was used to originally make the shoe. So it won't bend the shoe or it won't stretch the shoe in a manner that it's unnatural. But if you're gonna get aftermarket, make sure that you have something that, that provides support to the upper parts of the shoe, uh, this section here. <clears throat> Once that has been done, let's move forward to Brush the upper gently, just to remove any lint or any other particle that has been left behind. Don't forget to do it also on the tongue area. Let's start the back in this area here. I use the Mobri for the lining, Mobri cream, delicate cream, but for the upper itself, I'm going to use the Renovator. Yep, Renovator. Or Renovator, whichever you prefer. Just 
small amounts, spread it thin. I was reading one of the forums, shoe forums, there are such a thing, there are a thing, I'm sorry, that someone had a bad experience with uh, the renovator. It seems like they were working on a pair of shoes, applied the renovator, and then for whatever reason, he got interrupted, had to go open the door or something, and left the cream. I assume like this, and then <clears throat> he experienced it. He experienced some decoloration. I have never had any bad experience with the renovator, but um, I cannot say that that wouldn't be a thing. It's just that if you are working on your shoes, there are certain things that you cannot just leave halfway through, uh, especially when we're talking about cleaning and conditioning. Now, waxes and pigmented creams, I think you can leave there as much as you want. There's not gonna be um, any detrimental effect. But if you're talking, say for instance, a product like, uh, saddle soap you have to remove it immediately because it's a it's a cleaning agent and this renovator might not be a cleaning agent necessarily uh, but um, this wouldn't be something that I would leave a big spot like this sitting <clears throat> now it's not it's not a uh, I'm not saying that the person is responsible for what happened because most likely he didn't know better. And you expect that other products like cleaners could present that potential risk, but not necessarily a conditioner. So it's not, I'm not saying that he did something wrong. I'm just saying that I never had a negative experience with it. Just sharing something that I've read on the uh, shoe form couple weeks ago and now that I'm using the Saphir I thought, uh, renovator I thought that it would be worthwhile sharing note that I made the application of the cream after I inserted the uh, shoe tree, that is to have the leather properly stretched uh, and to make sure that every um, pore is treated. When you do works like uh, re and repainting a shoe, it is most likely necessary to do more than one application of a conditioner because the processes tend to be aggressive. Um, but given the fact that these shoes are brand new, I don't think that I need to do another pass. And most of the time, I do not mess with patinas and painting the shoes. For one, I'm not really proficient at it. I haven't practiced it enough. Um, and there are professionals that can do that. So I would much rather have someone that is best at something do something for me than uh, me to just mess a pair of shoes. Can you learn? Yes. Um, it's, it's something that you can learn. But at this stage in my life, I, I don't think that that is something that I want to start messing with but who knows maybe further along the road i will get more hands-on practicing and uh, we will be doing some shoe painting who knows
but for the immediate future, I can see that as a thing. This is going to be dull because of the renovator cream, but you can see that it also develops a small gleam or shine just with the renovator itself. But again, the idea to use the renovator is not to develop a shine, but to hydrate. So that is a nice secondary effect. Not the objective though. because they're new and they are a color that I think I have a match in shoe cream I could add a, I could add a colored cream but um, I think for right now it's uncalled for so I'm just gonna add a small amount of neutral cream just to ensure the proper nourishment of the litter. I know that I already made the application of the renovator, uh, so this might seem like an overkill, but there are small amounts of waxes in this cream, and that helps protect the upper from debris and dust and other elements like water. Make sure that you use small amounts. It's gonna be hard for you to tell because this is uh, transparent, but use small amounts and spread it thin. The friction between your hand and the leather should help the pores absorb the product and also shorten the amount that you have to wait for the cream to dry. You don't need small, you don't need too much. Now this design of shoe, which has a strange name, but <clears throat> if I mean if you put some thought to it, it actually makes sense. It's called Austerity Brogue because tor <sighs> Austerity Brogue um, and it's austere because there is no broken. So it's an elegant way to say poor broke shoe, I suppose. Or minimal or limited broken broke shoes. But what I was trying to say is that I find them rather elegant. Justin Fitzpatrick just came out with a line of uh, austerity brooks and he has an interesting take which would be a suede sturdy brook denying that but uh, I don't know if I want to pull the trigger right now
let me find a small brush so that we treat so that we treat the welts. Uh, there is a piece of thread in here. And I like to condition the leather because it's also a uh, leather sole. So I like to treat this area too, to make sure that those uh, welts remain healthy, protected, and they last. So I'll use a little bit of cream and then I'll also add some wax to it. Now this is a 270 welt, so there is no welt here in the back end, but this is still leather, so. There are areas in here, crevices, which I cannot reach with my fingers as well. So it's so always important to keep those things into consideration so that you add uh, creams, waxes in those areas too, to ensure that everything is properly treated and protected. Okay. Yes, we use the neutral cream. So most likely we don't need to use a cloth to remove the excess of the cream because it's not gonna stain or leave a mark on your trousers or pants or chinos, whatever you're wearing. But to keep everything hom homogenous and to make sure that every time we do a work on a pair of shoes, we do it the same way, then we will use a cloth to remove any excess cream that might have been left on the upper. I could have done this easily with just uh, the brush, but then again, I think that the more you develop a system, the more you make, have to make sure that that system is replicated in the exact same way every time. <clears throat> Let's find the brush. And uh, let's uh, give it a shine. Normally I would have used a hard brush, but there's nothing to be pushed into um, the upper in terms of pigments. So that step I can actually bypass. Now, if I had used a pigmented cream, I would have brushed it with that hard brush before using the cloth but anything that was not absorbed because the leather was dry and thirsty and then with the cloth most likely it came off you know this is interesting just a small amount of cream and you can see the difference Yes, this is dull because of the application, recent application of the cream, but still, this kind of glean and shine was not on the shoe when we started.
make sure you move the shoe at different angles so that you block all of the upper surface area. Okay. Know if I would necessarily want to pursue a mirror shine on this. We are getting into those moments of the year where um, I will be using more boots than shoes. It's gonna fall, it's gonna start here, it's already started, and uh, immediately after that comes the winter and we get a lot of snow here so there's snow and there's slush which is when the snow melts and uh, I'd like to keep my shoes away from that and have boots that are more appropriately made uh, for the winter time so I think I'll just add a small amount of wax to keep the shoes under storage for now now this is the wax, again we're going to apply the wax to the welds in case I have to wear the shoe and um, I encounter rain or just to make sure that the welds are well kept. Now the stack heel is also made out of leather so that's in there is not uncalled for, that's, I think it's a good thing. <clears throat> Now these shoes came with a small amount of burnish on the toe cap. It's very discreet, very subtle, but there is some small burnishing. You can see it in here. When you compare the toe cap, there is a small darkening spot, which I think this was in originally intended by the manufacturer, which is also appealing to the eye. But I'll just use neutral wax to keep everything simple. Now this is not the high gloss mirror shine uh, wax from Sophia. I have it here in neutral. Let me show it to you. <clears throat> this is the uh, mirror gloss. If I open it, you'll see how this looks rather uh, more compact. I have small amount, uh, but if you were to touch it, this feels creamier. This one feels really, really dry, which I assume is for the different content of um, carnauba waxes and bee waxes that make this product a little bit more oriented towards high gloss mirror shines. You can still achieve it with this one, it's just it's going to take a little bit more of time. This is more of a traditional wax, in my opinion anyway. Now the idea is again to protect the upper. It's also going to be high appealing, eye catching, because they're properly shine shoes, care shoes do stand out. Could I have used the cleaner? Sure, 
could have used briefed cleaner at the beginning but the shoes they look rather clean the upper looks rather clean and when i did the uh, cloth pass i didn't pick up anything so i think just with the conditioning of the sophie renovator and then the a little extra push with the neutral cream and that was enough for these pairs of shoes for these pair of shoes sorry I think that's enough for me in terms of waxes. Well, let's lace the shoes again. I think I might change this shoelaces for something flat and uh, maybe a different color. What do you guys think? Maybe a dark navy blue or a dark burgundy color laces. Um, yeah, leave me your comments on the uh, comment section. Maybe you share with me which which color you think would make more sense. It would make the shoe look more appealing. This is the same treatment that I'm going to use on those Carlos Santos shoes. So most likely the next two shoe shine videos are going to be a bit on the uh, shorter side. <clears throat> I will encourage that you use a brush, post brush, some moisture to make the wax shinier.
let me give it a pass with a microfiber towel. Just to remove any fingerprint mark that I have left. I could have left because, well, you have uh, oils on your skin, which is not something bad, but it takes away from the shine itself. Let's try to grab the shoe just by the sole and the shoe tree. This might not be that important for you, but if you are shining shoes for someone else, you don't want to see your fingerprint left behind. So just like that, we went from A to B with these pairs of shoes. Did an unboxing, did a very basic conditioning treatment for them to make sure that they can be stored or wear. Um, so they are ready to either remain in the box a little bit more or to be taken out for a stroll. Thank you very much for your patience and for joining me in this video. I hope uh, you liked what you've seen. If you have done, haven't done, have done so yet, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and um, we'll see you next time. Have a good day.